hello and welcome to Wine the Flick. I'm Christy. This is one of my wonderful dear friends, Jen Wong, who was good enough to come with me tonight to see the third Fifty Shades movie. Now, Jen saw the first one with me, and we, we giggled, we giggled and drank and enjoyed ourselves, and then you missed the second one. Totally missed it. Were you lost? With this third one? Yeah, it was like, it's so complicated, this plot. It's like so crazy. Who's who? Like, which one is Christian? Yeah. And which one is Anastasia? And why is he spanking her this time? Yeah. Why is he so, <laughs> what's that red room? The red room of pain. But now, oh, we'll just start, also, we're, we're, I'm having Pellegrino and lime tonight for the hell of it, just to switch things up. And yeah. Jen's having a Stella, and we're at the Arc Light in Hollywood, which is where we quite frequently are, and Matt is behind the camera. Hello, Matt. Um, so yes, Fifty Shades, we came and we cackled, and that was good. Yes. Um, and I don't know if this is how you felt about it, but I giggled, because it's terrible, but I feel like we turned a corner, like, culturally, to the extent that him exerting control over her and punishing her for his perception of her misdeeds doesn't play anymore like it did. And of course, like, the source material all came out many years ago. It's not, right. the, it's not the fault of the books, not the fault of the whole filmmaking process, because of course they had to make three movies, but like our lives have changed and our, I think our, our cultural depiction of relationships has changed so much that watching him like controlling her, yes. Pardon me, I have to point out, Guillermo del Toro is walking that way. Oh, right, Guillermo just, del Toro. Right, just right, right over here. Oh. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. I don't know. Yes. Hi, Guillermo. You're amazing. Hi. Hola. And look at it. on the sofas. Um, anyway, it's a star-studded night here at the Arc Light Hollywood. Um, I was going to say, though, that I just feel like it's not sexy anymore. Like, it just feels creepy at this point to watch this wealthy, powerful guy punishing her, even though she gets off on it. Does this bother you at all? I wondered about that before the movie. Okay. Like, in, given where we are right now in this moment in time, is this whole, like, he's a dom, she's a sub, and she, yeah, and, like, they didn't they work together at some point? Or? Well, no, she went to interview Oh, that's him. right, that's right. Oh, and right. And then he got her the job, but she wanted to earn it on her own right, terms. Like, right, I do appreciate right. that she, she like, back talks and thinks for herself constantly, but his intention is always, like, to, you know, control her and smother her. Right, but even the notion of, like, a woman back-talking to her boyfriend because he's controlling her, and that's, like, her standing up for herself is really messed up. Can we Retro. curse on this? Yeah, you can say whatever the fuck you want. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be on YouTube <laughs> and my little website. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's fucked up, you know? It's like, why... It's weird. It's weird. It didn't seem in this movie, like, it was very clear why they had the roles that they had. Except that, like, historically, she had been a sub because, and he gets off on being a dumb. Like, it didn't seem to really kind of do it for them. But, I mean, I don't, I don't see any chemistry between them. None at all. Like, zero. It's gotten worse. It's got, it, like, how could it have gotten worse? <laughs> you think you it would I mean? improve. Yeah. And, like, every, there were, like, this, this scene in Aspen with, like, three couples, and there was kind of nothing between all of the couples. And I was like, damn. Yeah. I don't understand this. This one felt more to me like porn than the others. Not from like a sexual perspective, but from a structural one. Like, yeah. there's so little connective tissue between the sex scenes. Yeah. You know, it's like, we're going to talk a little bit, and then out comes the blindfold and right. the handcuffs. Like, right. There is so right. little to it. She's always really good. Dakota Johnson is, I think, charming as hell and has a wonderful presence about her. He's gotten worse. He's like wood. There's nothing, not Dead like the in good the kind eyes. of wood. No, he, he, no, 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 not that. Not, I mean, <laughs> although he also is that. Yeah, is he? I, I don't. I, you, you don't know because he might not even have a penis for all we know. We don't know. We don't see we it. Don't we know. see like the shorts. They keep teasing. The shorts are like the, like, right there you know, they're on like the, hips. the bee. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how low he can wear his pants without yeah. showing butt crack. Right. Like that's what I was thinking. I was like, wow, he can wear his pants really low, but we never see butt it's crack. All gluteal muscle. Because oh, he works out all so the time. much. Wow, he works out a lot. Yes, the best part was the part at the end, the montage of where we have come from, from the beginning, with that oh blaring, that Love Me Like You Do song. Yeah. And one of the shots in the montage is of him, like, on his pommel horse. Oh, my God. <laughs> Planking on his Planking, pommel like, horse. Planking, like, doing that crazy plank. Yeah. yeah. That, I, 
I don't know, like, where are they serious about this? Do they are they Good making question. fun of the material? Because it's all just. I feel like in the beginning it was always so corny, but it was like they put a little bit more effort into making it kind of sexy. So, but this was really like I felt like it was a car ad. Like there's so many Audis in it. It's just like one Audi outrunning another Audi, and then it was also like a Korean, like a K-pop. It was sort of a K-pop <laughs> video, like a ballad, you know, where there's a lot of, like, they look at each other from a distance. Like, that pommel horse <laughs> scene was totally, yes, like, yes. you could have just put, like, a K-pop ballad over it, and it was, like, the and speaking of connective tissue, it just didn't, it was, like, montages and car ads and, like, luxury good display, but there was not a lot of, I mean, there was a lot of story, I guess, a lot of plot, but it was, like... It, it almost was like it was just soapy. Yes, and not, but not sexy. Not the sexy. Thing, like the thing that I, I think they all aim to do, is to like be a turn. And in theory, you go home and like, you fuck whoever your person is that you go home to because yeah. you've been so turned on by watching right. like, Christian and Anastasia do it. Yeah. But it was never, it was never sexy with a butt <laughs> <laughs> with sterling silver butt plugs. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole. I'm sorry. It's a top I'm, drawer on the yeah. right with extra special toys. We um, actually don't know if they're solid sterling silver. So <laughs> one of them was glass. Mm. It was twisty. <laughs> <laughs> Not my thing personally, but maybe it's Anastasia's thing now. Uh, yeah, I, I think she was still had it in when she was at the office. <laughs> Is that why she was giggling over yeah, the TV? Yeah, she was like, mm, yeah. Alex, yeah. so sitting down would be uncomfortable. Everything was bad, yeah. So, also speaking of porn, the dialogue was so stilted that it felt like porn. Between her yeah. and her assistant, between Christian and his brother, between right. Christian and his mom. Poor Marsha Gay Harden. It's like the easiest money Marsha Gay Harden ever made. She says like two sentences. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Her, yeah. I mean, her face was kind of frozen, so I feel like it was just, it kind of worked, you know? So, yeah, we laughed a lot. We did. Um, I actually didn't laugh that much. I was sort of, like, uncomfortable. Like, I was like, <laughs> I'm not turned on. There are a lot of nice things. Like, she's wearing a Cartier bracelet. She's wearing a nice watch. They're driving an Audi. They're driving another Audi. They're in a private jet. Like, but I, I just felt like I was just watching sort of, like, pretty things go by in the way that, like, you might flip through a catalog yeah. or, like, one thing I do at night is, like, just, like, like window shopping, like, online, but just not buying anything kind of felt like that where I was like yeah I feel like in the first one we laughed a lot because it was like borderline corny and it seemed like there was a slight wink to the audience like yeah this is kind of over the top and this is porn for cougars or you know (laughs) lonely housewives or whatever and like that works you know we're in that demo sadly yeah yeah (laughs) yeah you former Pellegrino (laughs) sober on a Wednesday congrats to me um, but you know what? I feel like the first one, Sam Taylor Johnson directed it. A yeah. woman directed it. And I feel like there was, yes, that knowing wink to the audience of, I know this is ridiculous, and I'm going to give you what you want, and we're all going to have fun with it. Yeah. This didn't it, have that. And she's also an artist, yeah. so it was like, I felt like it was more pleasurable to look at, even though I looked at so many luxury goods, <laughs> like, in, during this movie. Yeah. Like, I it wasn't even that pleasant to look at, you know? It was just kind of like... Everything's so nice. It's like stepping into a model home that it happens to have like a dungeon in it with like whips, <laughs> basically. Which they all it's like a panic room. Yeah, in totally. reverse. Um, I was gonna ask you since, since Jen is a total clothes guru, she dresses beautifully all the time. You yeah. know, you know these things. Yes. What do you think of the clothes in it? Um, you know, I mean, I definitely had a like, wow, having a twenty-year-old body is great. <laughs> um, you can wear anything. Um, yeah, it's, you know, she was a well-dressed, she was a well-dressed lady. He's not so impressive, but, like, I have a problem with him. I don't think he's sexy. Neither do I. You know, I don't think he has an edge. That was always my problem with the casting of him. Like, I always pictured, like, Michael Fassbender in That's this, good. Like, a, a sick fuck. <laughs> but he was also sexy. Yes. You know, this guy just seems like kind of like, he's pretty. Kind of has a goofy smile. One eye is bigger than the other. 
I was sort of fixated on that. We're all asymmetrical, Jen. I know, but it's like, I mean, he's not working his asymmetry. No, but the abs, the abs oh, are the perfectly abs. stacked. Yeah, in. those are yeah, symmetrical. Yeah, his abs are God, symmetrical. The apex. So, um, Wasn't Charlie Hunnam supposed to do these? Yes, yes. he was. I interviewed Charlie Hunnam, and he was supposed to have done this movie, and instead he got to work with James Gray and Guy Ritchie and, and Guillermo del Toro, who just walked by, and uh, yeah, so he made better choices, I would say, but he also has symmetrical abs. He does. Um, yeah, but I read the books, because I'm a professional, damn it, and I do preparation. When I, I read, read the, the books, books, too. I um, did. I pictured, I, did. I pictured Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom? <laughs> Wow. So we basically have just entered your red room in your mind. But I think because he's like kind of slick. He's like handsome and slick and like yeah. not trustworthy. True. True. That's why I, I don't know. That's why I pictured in my mind when I was reading them. And was disappointed in the casting of Jamie Dornan. Yeah. He's kind of goofy and like I definitely would not take orders from him. Like no. Michael Fassbender, maybe like yeah, yeah. you got to be like really sexy, but otherwise it's like no. I agree, and also um, be prepared to laugh at his big serenade. I'm not gonna give away what he, what he Whoa. sings. <laughs> but I think it's meant to have been like a really romantic moment. Yeah, like a sweet moment. Yeah, and we were cackling. The, the whole theater place. was laughing, Cackle. dying laughing. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And like he's not getting a record deal. <laughs> Keep your day job, Christian Grey. No, Justin Timberlake. No, he's not. He's not a man of the woods. No. So we have a, a rating system here on Wine the Flick that um, how many glasses of wine do you need before you see the movie? Oh. So, like, do you need four? Do you need three? Do you need none at all? Just go in sober and have fun? Yeah. You definitely need some. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that and some recreational marijuana. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, would you recommend that girls go with their girlfriends to go see this? Ladies, like a ladies' night? <laughs> I, it doesn't. I, it's again. It just. It wasn't that fun. Yeah. You know. It's like seeing Magic Mike, the night it came out here at the ArcLight, yeah. and Channing Tatum and Joe Manganiello and Adam Rodriguez. They showed up, and then oh Joe Manganiello like, oh my god, just like ripped his like tank top. Like he ripped it off of his shredded. own body? Yeah, kind of. And it was just like, it was insane. It was and, magic. Um, women were excited. Okay. Women were all there and women were very excited. Like that's the kind of movie you want to see with your girlfriends. Yeah. This, this is, I don't know, this is when you sort of like watch at home on like Apple TV. <laughs> a sad night yeah. kind of sad night we're just like well it's on so okay while you're folding laundry because if, if nothing else the 50 shades series reinforces very traditional ideas of love and marriage like it's about making a home as as like subversive as it seems superficially yeah. it's all about like getting that ring getting that house oh my gosh. having that baby having that baby having, having that other baby. baby spoiler they have babies also, like, the oh. wardrobe of, like, the whites are hung up together, and the darker colors are hung up together. I like and the that. the shoes. I mean, of course you do. <laughs> I, mean, I like it, too, but I was like, um, yeah, the, the wardrobe was a little boring. I got more excited about the closet than about the actual sex. It was I don't so know organized why they didn't have sex in the closet. They should. I mean, they should have just they, messed they up they that closet. The right there. The that would have been much more subversive in, speaking of subversive yeah. in this movie than going to the red room just yes. like fucking up that closet yeah. <laughs> so goddamn organized all the ties were wrapped like up these, perfectly every sneaker like every $500 like designer sneaker had a little like spot and then there were like like eight inches between each <laughs> I don't even understand that but yeah okay. so uh, so see it to laugh or see it when it's on TV yeah, see it and to feel sad feel sad <laughs> And thank you for joining me on a Wednesday. Cheers. And I'll bring you to a good movie next time. You promise? Yes. We'll see. Bye.